ma'am. Thank you for coming into the clinic today. What brings you here? So I went hiking about 10 days ago, and about two days afterwards, I saw this weird black dot, and I took it off, and then there was a rash around it, and it's looking, it's looking really weird. So I've also haven't been feeling well. I've been in bed for the past four days. I've had fevers. I've had chills. I'm just finally like, I need to figure out what's wrong with me. Well, based on your symptoms and your rash, I think you might have Lyme disease. We're going to need to run some more tests. But based on everything else, I think that might be the culprit. Let's learn some more about this disease and some of its causes. Flu-like symptoms such as fever, chills, headache, swollen lymph nodes, fatigue, muscle, and joint ache can lead to the common misdiagnosis of Lyme disease. If Lyme disease is left untreated, it can develop chronic arthritis, disturbances in heart rhythm, numbness in limbs, concentration issues, as well as trouble processing information and following conversations. What can help differentiate Lyme disease from the flu is the erythema migraine rash, which is a rash that looks like a bullseye or target. This rash is not present in all cases, and that's what makes Lyme disease easy to misdiagnose. The rash will not normally be found to be itchy or painful, just warm to the touch. 95% of Lyme disease cases are found in the northeastern parts of the United States, and there are about 300,000 cases each year. Everyone is susceptible to the disease because it is caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi there that are found in some deer ticks. Deer ticks can get infected by feeding on infected deer, mice, squirrels, or birds. Most people don't notice that they've been bit by the tick because around the cooler months, the deer tick is about the size of a sesame seed, and during the warmer months, they can be as big as poppy seeds. Fortunately, Lyme disease isn't contagious, and you can't pass it through touch or by being around someone. This Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria is found in the mouths of black-legged ticks. These ticks will sit on the edges of grass or shrubbery and go questing with their front legs outstretched from the foliage, waiting to climb onto a passerby. The tick first finds a feeding spot, which is usually somewhere relatively out of the way of the host, such as the armpit or scalp. The tick will cut the skin's surface and insert a feeding tube, secreting saliva which numbs the skin's surface. The insect will then suck the host's blood for several days before detaching. If the tick has fed on, the an fed on an animal which carried the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria before, it stays in the tick system and is then passed to the next host. This bacteria passes on zoonotically as well, so most animals are able to get Lyme disease. It does take more than 24 hours for the bacteria to infect the host though, because it is such a slow-moving pathogen. This means ticks usually must stay attached for 36 to 48 hours before the bacteria can fully enter the system. The bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi is a corkscrew shape that does not replicate quickly like other bacteria. The slow rate at which it replicates means that there isn't much of Borrelia burgdorferi in the host and makes it harder to find and diagnose. Borrelia burgdorferi also doesn't circulate through the blood like most bacteria, which makes it that much harder to find and easily diagnosed as a flu. It doesn't even rely on iron to survive. It relies on manganese, which, when caught early, can make Lyme disease easier to starve out than other bacteria. This bacteria does not send out toxins throughout the body, but instead has direct interaction with the cell's tissues. It encounters such as the bladder, heart, brain, skin, and joints. When the deer tick bites you, the salivary proteins it has suppresses the pro-inflammatory response of the host, making it easier for the bacteria to work its way through the body. Here is a flowchart of possible testing that can be done to diagnose the disease for certain. In this case, the doctor would take a sample and perform an enzyme immunoassay. This test uses enzymes to scan the body for antibodies that would be created in response to the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. An immunofluorescence assay can be done as well. It really depends on the preference of the doctor. If this test came back positive, an IgM and IgG western blot test would be performed since the patient has been infected for less than 30 days. These tests would help confirm that the infection is Lyme and not a different disease. 
as the enzyme immunoassay does not prove existence of only Lyme, but multiple other diseases as well. ELISA is a no another common test that can be done. However, it provides false positives about 50% of the time, making it generally unreliable. If ELISA is used, a Western blot is highly recommended to go along with it. Other tests that can be done but are less common are PCR and the C6 peptide tests. If this, it is also recommended that you ask your doctor about co-infections that may have come along with the Lyme disease. Infection can be avoided by refraining from going in heavily wooded areas or areas with very tall grass. It is recommended to walk in the center of the trail as to avoid brushing against foliage. Brushing against grasses and shrubs can make or break whether or not you come into contact with a tick. If these sorts of areas are explored, be sure to always check yourself for ticks afterwards. Ticks vary in size, so even if you find a small speck, ask a friend or family member to check for you if you cannot properly reach the area. If a tick is found, use a pair of tweezers to remove it pulling at the base of the head. Keep the tick in a plastic baggie or a small Tupperware container until after 30 days of the bite in case symptoms of Lyme disease appear. The tick can be sent to a special lab in Pennsylvania where they run the tick's DNA through a qPCR DNA test. It will take about three to five days to get back and to find out if the tick was the tick that gave you Lyme disease. If the test comes back negative, it does not necessarily mean that your system is free of the Lyme bacteria. There may have been another tick bite which could have caused the Lyme to enter the system. For our patients, seeing as they are an adult in good standing health other than the Lyme, they would most likely be prescribed an antibiotic to take orally. Possibilities include 10 milligrams of doxycycline twice a day for 10 to 21 days, 500 milligrams of Sephorozeme Axetal twice a day for 14 to 21 days, or 500 milligrams Amoxicillin three times a day for 14 to 21 days. There is a risk of developing post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, where patients can feel lethargic and fatigued for up to six months, but this is only a small percentage of cases which actually develop this syndrome. The symptoms are usually rather nonspecific and it has been shown that a longer course in antibiotics does not make a difference as to whether or not these symptoms appear. And that's everything you need to know about Lyme disease. Don't forget to take your antibiotics. Thanks, Doc. <laughs>